Hello YouTube. Today I wanted to talk to you about uh, some electrical connectors called Anderson power poles, or typically known as power poles. Uh, they're these very neat uh, high current hermaphroditic DC connectors. Uh, they're available in a variety of current ratings. However, these uh, smaller sizes all use the same housing. Now, before I jump too much into this, I just want to say that uh, I'm not affiliated with uh, Anderson, the company that designed and manufactures these connectors, or uh, PowerWorks.com. I just ordered these in to fit out on a lot of my gear and some uh, batteries. Um, I've used these before and they're great, so I just wanted to do a short little video about them. Um, essentially, they are high current DC connectors that have no gender. By being genderless connectors, this means that you can plug any cable into another one, which can be useful and or dangerous. This means that you can plug a source into a source, or a load into a load, or you can connect two cables together to turn them into a nice little converter cable. Um, by doing this, I can actually make little adapters. Here's an example. I have made up a, uh, a binding post to power pole, and a clamp to power pole. So what I could theoretically do is plug one end to my power supply and one end clamped onto a battery and I can charge a battery. But what about fusing? Well, I can just insert a fuse in line. So that's why they're really useful. You can cre pretty much create any cable that you would possibly want and then connect any device to any other device at the same time. Now, they're available for these small sizes in 15, 30, and 45 amp. The contacts themselves are probably rated for more than uh, 45 amps, however, uh, the actual material used uh, has to be sized correctly for the gauge of wire, so it's limited by the wire gauge, not by the contact surface. Now, these are pretty interesting connectors. I'll give you a close-up here uh, in a second. If I can get the camera to focus on them. So here are two connectors. They would typically fit together like this. Now you can see red to red, black to black. You can see a little bit of the contact inside. Now the way these contacts work is that one contact is facing one direction, one contact is facing the other direction. There are springs located on the reverse side of each contact that force them into each other. Now, a side effect of this is that they are self-cleaning. So as you force the contacts together, the mating surfaces scrape against each other and clean off any dirt, debris, or uh, oxidation on the surfaces. So when you push the connectors together, they lock firmly into place. Now, it doesn't take very much force to remove them, uh, just a little bit of pull, but they clean themselves every time you make contact, and carry full load without any heating or loss. And uh, even though they're silver, they're actually copper inside, which is good. They're electrical grade copper. The enclosures themselves, or the housings for these connectors, you can uh, arrange them in any sort of uh, arrangement that you would want. So you can actually connect more than just two together. Um, I've seen these used on uh, UPSs, on wheelchairs, on robots, and most commonly on ham radio gear. They're great little connectors. You can arrange them under over like this, but the typical arrangement is uh, in this manner, with the uh, contacts facing upwards, the red on the left side looking towards the cable. Um, this is the most common arrangement for 12 volts DC. Others may depart from this standard, but this is what's recognized by uh, Aries, the Amateur Radio Emergency Services group down in the uh, US. Um, pretty much everyone uses this for 12 volts, however you may find higher voltages marked by different colors. You can also get these connectors in a variety of colors. What I have here is a uh, 2 to 1 Y connector for a series pack. So I can put two 12 volt batteries in and get 24 volts out. And I've marked this with my own standard of using yellow you can use whatever color you want, but typically red and black recognized for uh, 12 volt DC. Now, Anderson is not new to this business at all. They've been 
used in forklift battery packs for years and years and years. Um, that is known by their uh, SB series connectors, uh, which are these types here. Um, they're much larger versions, but they're the same hermaphroditic design. Um, I just happen to make up a little uh, small power pole to large 50 amp connector for myself so I could connect large battery packs down to my uh, ham radio gear if I wanted to. But uh, yeah, these connectors are very interchangeable. Now, the only catch about these is that they cost more than your average uh, regular insulated or non-insulated crimp connector like this little spade one here. Um, and they're kind of hard to crimp. They're not hard to crimp because of faulty design. They're hard to crimp because of very tight uh, engineering tolerances. The spacing inside the contact is just big enough, sorry, the uh, housing, the space inside the housing is just big enough for the contact to fit inside once you insert it. Now, the way to get around that is to buy one of these nice little ratcheting uh, crimpers. This one's called the Tri-Crimp. Um, it's a very nice crimper that I'll go into separately in another video or a second part of this video. Um, it does cost $40. You can get a die set, which is about $50 extra, that lets you crimp pretty much everything else, from coax to uh, the 50 or 75 amp contacts used by these types. Um, coax, OEM type connectors, um, insulated and non-insulated connectors. If you get the die set, that's pretty much the last crimper you ever need, um, which is kind of my plan for the near future. But if you really plan to do a lot of power pole connectors, this is the connector crimper to buy. Um, otherwise, they're great connectors and they assemble uh, quite easily once you get used to it. And in terms of durability, I've used these for a couple of years now, and you just plug them and unplug them and you can just uh, repeatedly make connections and disconnections. You don't wear them out, they don't get oxidized, they don't get loose um, or uh, wear out over time really. Um, in fact, you may even be able to see how there's a little... No, I can't seem to get the camera to focus on this. Unfortunately, you can't see it, but you can actually see the marks that the uh, self-cleaning action makes by cleaning off oxidation on the contact surface which is pretty neat. Um, fortunately, the camera can't see it, but still. Another thing that I have set up are for my 12-volt sealed lead-acid batteries. I've made up little connectors that go from the spade connectors here to a pair of power poles. Now, why a pair of power poles? So I can plug one pack into an adjacent one and string together an entire series of sealed lead acid batteries to make one large battery bank. Or I can just put two loads on one. So I can just pull this out of my rack for charging batteries, which I charge using a bunch of solar panels, and then use them in a robotics project or whatever, and then just slap them back into the battery charging bank and uh, not have to worry about it. All the batteries are kept at the same voltage, so when I series them for higher voltages, I don't have to worry about that either. Um, that's another thing. You can also use a bunch of these connectors to make series connections. Uh, just be careful. Make sure you use different colored connectors to designate higher voltages. Otherwise, you will end up with uh, probably an electrical fire in your hands. But uh, regardless, I can say put two of these together and make 24 volts using this uh, Y connector. Or I can just put this large adapter on and connect this onto a uh, a larger load, even though this battery probably can't take it. Or I can use a larger charger to charge a small battery. Um, but yes, it's quite versatile. I've even made up special adapter cables for it. Like you saw earlier, I had the uh, the SB50 and the Y connector, this fuse cable. I made up a little Deans connector. I have the other uh, male and the, I have a male and female set for this Deans connector, which is a RC hobby size connector. Um, however, it's being used to power the camera light right now, so I can't exactly show it to you. Um, I have some extension leads made up. I have some heavy gauge battery clamp to power pole adapters made up. I even have a small 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery to power pole made up, so I can actually just plug my camera light into this while I'm out in the field, which is a pretty neat feature. Um, 
And in fact, I'll even show you if I can manage to do this without killing the camera light. This is the arrangement that's powering the camera light right now. You can see the two batteries are in parallel, and this is the other end of the Dean's connector. And uh, right now it's being used to power the camera light. But that's the uh, Dean's connector uh, female end being used to power the camera light. I don't have 50 net connectors to show, but believe me when the 50 net connectors are just as good as the 30 and 45 amp versions. Anyways, this is about 10 minutes, so I better end this video. Watch another video for tutorial on how to crimp these connectors and just to show how they're put together. Thanks for watching.